You are listening to the Spurs Related Podcast. Listen for free on Anchor and Spotify. Hello guys, welcome to another Spurs Related Podcast with your host James. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host Joseph McBride, uh, who's sitting to the right of me. And... uh, Yes, uh, we're here again on YouTube and Spotify and Apple Music. Um, Joe, welcome on in as always. Nice to do another one of these. I know it's the international break, but there's still a lot to talk about. Yeah, always something to talk about with Spurs, as we know. Um, and as uh, always, we've got another guest with us today. Uh, very excited to join, be joined by Jack Burford. Jack, welcome on in. I know you've done a, a few appearances with We Are Tottenham TV, and uh, it's great to see your passion. Thanks very much for having me on today, mate. Lovely stuff. And um, yeah, Jack, I, I know you're you're really interested in kind of the Spurs social media slash, you know, YouTube scene. How has it been um, doing some interviews with uh, We Are Tottenham TV? Oh, it's been brilliant. I was very uh, fortunate to get involved and uh, hopefully do some more in the future. But sadly, uh, whenever I seem to go on, <laughs> we lost. But at least uh... I got over my passionate views. Um, and I got to talk about uh, Spurs, so at least got to say what I felt, and I think it went down pretty well. I'd like to think. Absolutely, and uh, it seems like you've got some some really good passion. Uh, it's it's lovely to see. Joe, how's the international break been for you? Pretty dull. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> not in a bad way. Obviously, I love the big competitions and stuff, but um, I just always want the Premier League back, and I think that's a, a view that a lot of people will share. Obviously. I love watching the countries play and there's a lot of national pride and stuff. But I mean, especially for England so far, you know, where we're from, San Marino and uh, Albania, it's not been the most enthralling uh, watch. (laughs) But Poland on, uh, is it Wednesday? So I hope that's it. Yeah, Yeah. uh, it's got the clash of obviously um, Kane versus Lewandowski. Um, Who is? Lewandowski, Kane was Lewandowski, knee injury. Oh, see, I didn't do my research before, but... um, Lewandowski's injured. Well, that's uh, a big, big positive for England, and um, definitely, definitely a, a shame in terms of the Kane versus Lewandowski thing, but a good thing for England. Mm. Um, Jack, just gonna get, hit you with an early question: Who do you think the best striker in sure, the world? Mate. I think the best striker in the world. Look, my argument: I'm going to say Harry Kane. I'm a Spurs <laughs> fan, and I see him week in, week out, and I think I'd be. Uh, I think it'd be unfair to not say Harry Kane. I'd say Kane is definitely the most complete striker. I just think the way he manages to drop deep, his range of passing, his finishing is just unmatchable. Lewandowski is also on another level. But I think if you put Kane in Bayern Munich's team and you put Lewandowski in Spurs' team, the numbers wouldn't be comparable. I think Lewandowski would struggle a lot more in, in Spurs' team and Kane would still five in Bayern's team. But then, then again, that's my personal opinion. And I definitely think it's a good debate to be had. Yeah, 100%. I think I think that's a very fair point about the complete striker and the fact he drops deep. Um, I think you've obviously... There's probably four or five strikers in the world you could you could argue. You could obviously say, you know, Haaland and Bappe, Lewandowski, obviously mm. the obvious one, and, and Ronaldo, if you can't, as a striker. But... I think your point about Kane is very fair. And I think obviously a lot of Spurs fans will agree with you. And a lot of Spurs fans will say, you know, Mbappe and, and go with the kind of hype. Joe, what, what's your opinion on this um, very unexpected start? Uh, Kane's got a lot more to his game. He can do more for the team. You know, there's passing and he's definitely the more complete uh, player just because there's more to his game, as I said. I think Lewandowski is ridiculous. He's so lethal. And it's one of those, I'll see Bayern Munich or, or Poland are going to play. And I'll just know he's going to score. It's just, you, it just it, it's beyond expected now. He's just so lethal. I'm pretty sure he's got more more goals than games for club and country this season. And it's just, it was a shame that the Ballon d'Or was cancelled last year because, I mean, that was his for the taking. Mm. Um, so in terms of players, obviously they're different and they do different roles in their team. So with the midfield and the team Bayern have, you know, he's just up there to score and finish it off and he always does. So it depends what you're looking for in a player, but they're definitely, I think, the two best in the world. Yeah, I think, I think obviously, like you said, um, Kane probably would have won Ballon d'Or. Um, I know sometimes it's a bit of a popularity contest in terms of, you know, we said Messi, Ronaldo, Messi, Ronaldo, and, and rightly so, of course. Um, but, you know, 
I think he would have definitely had a good shout. And you know, never you never know. Depending on how England do in the Euros this year, who knows? Next, um, he could win the next season one. And um, yeah, I don't see why not because obviously he's had a ridiculous goal scoring season, and he's been he's top assist. He's got the, he's top of the chart on assists and top of the chart on goals this season so far. I mean, that is quite an incredible start on its own. Um, so I think if he has a good Euros, I think we could we could see Harry Kane Ballon d'Or. What do you think, Jack? Uh, to be honest, I would not be surprised. I think him playing for, for Spurs, he's kind of fought in his chances at the minute. And I'm not saying for Kane to leave because I want him to stay forever. I don't I don't want him going anywhere. I know a lot of people say, oh, I want the best for Kane. I, I want what's best for him. But he's a Tottenham boy. And if anyone's going to bring... Bring, imagine that story, I think, for Kane. He, he's growing up with his club he loves and he ends up winning the Premier League with Spurs. It's just, could you imagine that happening? Mm. And I think that's a lot more uh, luxurious of him winning it with Spurs than winning it with someone like Man City because he's, he's, he's been built around that team and everyone's relying on him. And I think if he could do it with Spurs with, a, with some financial backing, um, I think that'd be a lot more... Um, self-worth than going to Man City when, mm. you know, they could win it with anyone up front, do you know what I mean? They could yeah. play be as in Stones up front and they'd still have the quality <laughs> in behind to get the goals. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. I think addressing what you said, uh, can I imagine Spurs winning the league? Uh, unfortunately not. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, obviously, no obviously, but yeah. it would be ridiculous. Obviously, I understand the point and, and I think it leads me on perfectly to the next point. I'm going to stay with you, Jack. Now, obviously, our main talking point today is um, the Jose kind of debate. Is he staying? Is he going at the end of the season? Is he going to get backed? Now, Fabrizio Romano, um, obviously, big, big writer has said and football journalist has said that um, Marino is going to get backed in the summer and there is no break clause in his contract i.e. we're going to have to pay a lot of money if we're going to get rid of him. I can't see Levy doing that. So, it is, is, do you see Levy backing um, Tottenham in terms of financially and, and the players in the summer? Are we going to get who we want? Is Marino going to get who he wants? What do you think is going to happen? I think I think it'd be stupid not to back Mourinho. And that's probably a lot of people will not see that right now. But if we did sack Mourinho and hide Nagelsmann, he's, he's just going to... Like the, the players are not going anywhere. We still got Dyer and Sanchez at the back. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I think it, it's not you. He's doing that for a long term vision. But if Mourinho got high, if Mourinho got back in the summer, we could see players like Sabitzer. Hopefully, we could see players like Botman at the back, and it would start getting a better structure. And I think mm. we'd start to be more stable. So I think he'd be silly not to back Mourinho because we all know when Mourinho gets. The money he deserves, he delivers, and I don't. I think it would be silly not to give him a go because we've signed one of the best managers in the world before this. Like, yes, he had a bad time at Man United, mm. but you just have to look at his his CV and he's delivered at every club he's been to. And with, realistically, I don't think us right now, with the trophies we won, we're not in a position to say, "No, you're not good enough, Mourinho." Do you know what I mean? Just give him the mm. tools he needs, and uh, he might deliver. And I think. We just got to do it. Give him the money in the summer he requires, and let's hope for a better season next year. I think you're spot on. I think obviously Marino's CV speaks for itself, and like you said, there's not many managers in the world you'd want to back. Um, obviously Guardiola, Mourinho, you know Wenger was when he was in charge. They're the, they're the top top managers in the game, and I don't think you can argue backing Mourinho would be a silly decision because at the end of the day, we're not going to get a more experienced manager than Mourinho um, in the next probably four or five years. And, and the thing is, he's, he is one of the best managers ever. And people might say his tactics are finished. But in my opinion, I think we're at a stage now where we have to back him. Yes, it was very disappointing against Saga. We know that. And yes, it was a shock. But I mean, for argument's sake, in three, four weeks time, we could, there could be so many fans going back from Mourinho out to Mourinho in if we beat Man City. So, mm. you know, it's a one-off game. And yes, we're massive underdogs, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I'm not just going to sit here and And sit. I think that was the player's fault. I think that was definitely mm. the player's fault, the Zago game, because at the end of the day, no one can tell me that pit, that 11 players we put on the pitch aren't good enough to beat Dynamo Zago. But it was just the mentality and people thinking they're better than they are. And they failed to get the job done. I highly doubt Mourinho went in there and said, this is going to be a walk in the park, lads. Just do what you want. I think he would have said, don't take them as mugs. Like, let's get the job done. And they mm. failed to do that. Really, yeah, right. we needed one goal. They needed one goal. 
And with the well, who do, or do with Kane, I think Kane was starting still. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Bale was bench, but we we had these uh, all these Very players that well class yeah. players playing, and we couldn't get the job done. And I and I think that's just ridiculous. But anyway, we're going to send ourselves crazy, Karen, <laughs> talking about that. Yeah, you're right. And I think Joe mentioned it last week. It was just complacency and arrogance from Tottenham. Like like you said, we needed one goal and um, we didn't manage to get it. I mean, we had several chances in the game, but they were the much better team overall. Um, mm. Joe, Joe is Jack. Of course, he's right. He did run riot. Jack, uh, no, sorry, Joe, is Jack right in terms of saying about the sort of complacency amongst the squad? Not necessarily, there's obviously so many fans blaming it on Mourinho, but actually, is it is it a lot of the time the players? Yeah, that wasn't Mourinho at all. Like, it was just lazy. And, you know, the first goal was awful from Aurier, just letting him have too much time. And I mean, the goal was amazing. So you can't really take that away from him. And again, he had so much space on the wing and he, like cut it back to the six yard box of the tap in for all six. You can't let that happen. Mm. Yeah, that it was a kind of an easier draw. And after the two nil first, you know, first leg, it was okay, we're in a really good place here, but you don't take that for granted. You've still got to take that with both hands and get the job done. And it was just poor. So yeah, I don't want to talk about that either. Like even as a neutral, I was so mad watching it. I just couldn't mm. believe it. It was you had it there. And I still think it was it's potentially your competition to win. So the fact that you're out of it after being beaten oh, by Zaga, it's, it's I mean, just frustrating for you guys. But yeah, you've still got, you know, the other cup final in a few weeks' time. And you've brought Mourinho in to win a trophy, and I still think that's what's going to happen. Um, not not just he wants to deliver it to Tottenham. He, I think he needs it for himself. He's doing this for himself as much as he's doing it for Tottenham. That's what he's, what he's mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. And if he can silence everyone and be like, you know, I was the first man to bring a trophy to this club for 13, 14 years, he will love that. Oh, 100%. I think you're right about the individual accolade for Mourinho as well. Um, He doesn't want that gap in his CV, like Jack was saying. He wants to win at something at every single club he's been at. And I think it's important to remember that Mourinho is trophies. And I know we say it several, several times, but yes, people might go, oh yeah, Tottenham's the only club he's not going to win a trophy at. But at the end of the day, if we don't back him, it's definitely not going to happen. So I think it's very important to remember that Mourinho's CV outdoes most managers at the moment if not all and you know we've got we've got to back him if now if there's any time it's now now it brings me on to the next subject guys which is obviously there's been a lot of talks this week about Harry Kane uh, unfortunately being very heavily linked with um, a few clubs and the, the the kind of fee that everyone's talking is 150 million pounds now we've got to take it with a pinch of salt a lot of it is paper talk now Many sources have said this week that uh, Levy is open to talks at 150 million minimum. Now, Jack, I'm going to start with you. Do you think selling, let me put this in the right way so you, it's not a silly question. Do you think selling Kane would be a mistake or do you think 150 million with the state of the squad would be very useful to building on for Mourinho zero now? Uh, I think you can look at it both ways. I think with Mourinho in charge, I think getting rid of Kane would be the worst thing you could do. Mm-hmm. But if you hire a coach like Nagelsmann, that 150 million for him, that's probably his bread and butter because he can look at the young players in Germany. He can look across the globe and think, I can build the team I want with the high press, mm-hmm. the aggressive nature, the high line. Um, and that 150 million is a lot of money. It's loads of money. But for a player with Harry Kane's numbers, and age and the prior and the form of his life, I don't think it's worth it because Mourinho's gameplay at currently revolves around Kane. Like mm-hmm. he does everything for Spurs. You see, when Son's on his before with Pochettino, Son stepped up. Right now, with, with Son without Kane, he just doesn't deliver. Son's always as soon as Kane gets the ball, Son's off, mm. and everything. And that's the same with Bale. Everyone lights up when Kane's on the ball. Everyone. Everyone's waiting, making an option. But when you see Vinicius, who I actually rate as a striker, drop into that, everyone's just walking. No one cares. Mm-hmm. But as soon as Kane gets it, he brings everyone into the play and he just excites everyone. And I think currently, with Mourinho in charge, there's no way you can sell Kane for any price at the minute. And I think, I don't know, he might push to go. I do think he, he wouldn't do that because I think his loyalties at the club are too far. But if we don't reinvest in the summer... I'll be very surprised if in that in that January or next summer um, he he won't be go he won't be going. So let's hope we reinvest around Kane. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. A strong back line is really important for me. I think that's really important to remember. I think, like you said, 
Kane's loyalties do lie with Tottenham. But obviously, in the back of his head, like everyone in the media is saying, and I feel like the media, in a way, and, and this is how it goes, but I feel like the media is almost trying to say to Harry Kane, you know, you need to go somewhere to win a trophy. And, and they might not be wrong, um, 100%. Obviously, Man City is you're much more likely to win a trophy, of course. You're going to win trophy after trophy after trophy with that kind of money. But the thing that people got, have got to remember is, Harry Kane, like you said at the very start, is is, is Tottenham through and through. And I think I think it's an interesting one because obviously this is the summer where it's really important. You know, he's 27 years of age. He's got one big mm. contract left in him before, as soon as a player turns 30, is 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 price almost pretty much halves really. Um, so yeah. I think it's his last big contract. Now, are Tottenham going to come and offer some big money? Is he going to want to try and break the Jimmy Greaves record, the Premier League Alan Shearer mm. record? Or is he going to get swayed by, you know, Manchester City or Real Madrid or whoever it may be? Now, I think it's a big talking point. Joe, what's your opinion? You've got, I mean, he, he deserves the best and everyone wants that. So I think it's a, it's a conversation for Tottenham two ways. You either do sell him and let him go or you, you say to him, you know, you want trophies, we're going to heavily invest with you as well. They've got to show him that desire, I think. And, you know, repay all of his his duties and just probably go for it. And obviously that's what Mourinho needs as well. So if you can give Mourinho what he needs and Kane, you know, what he wants, then you're going to be laughing. I think if you can invest in the right areas. Um, yeah, and it, it depends what, you say, if, what you're saying of what, of what he wants. I'm sure he wants to break the Premier League record. So I think he wants to stay in England and his family are happy there. Um, and if he wants to become even more of a club legend than he already is, break Jimmy Creaves or the rest of it, he's, he definitely can if he stays. Mm, like it's, it's, yeah. it's one of those. Um, so I, just, I think it's, it's more on what Tottenham are going to offer him. I, I doubt as much as his loyalties do lie with Tottenham that he's going to be just happy to you know surrender all the possible success just by staying. Mm. I think they've either got mm. to show him you know the intent to improve um, uh, and invest more and add more, or you know, I think he, he will go to a place like Man City. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, spot on. I think I think there's two sides of it, like you were basically saying there. Like, if he wants to break the records and stay loyal with Tottenham, like that one club player, he's going to easily do it. But obviously, in the back of his mind, he's going to think, like you were saying last week as well, Joe, the big players are always remembered for what they do in terms of trophies. And I think that's always very important to remember when you're considering, is it the right move for Kane? And only he knows really, because he's going to be having these discussions with his agent, whether we know it or not, as to whether it makes sense to stay at Tottenham if they offer him the deal, which I'm sure mm. they will, or whether it's going to make sense for his career to win trophies. And like we said before, we're not going to blame him if he moves, you know, absolute club legend regardless and what he's done for Tottenham in the last few years we've not seen or well, certainly in my lifetime we haven't seen a player have that much influence on one club um, I think it's very important to to remember that he is going to be a legend no matter what now Jack I'll, go on yeah no go on I was also I was also going to say though I think as much as everyone's remembered by trophies don't get me wrong and I think it'd be criminal for the career Harry Kane's had but for him not to end up with one of the big, big trophies like the Premier League, like the Champions League. But I'd also say Alan Shearer obviously won that Premier League title with Blackburn. Mm-hmm. I don't think many... He's still remembered as one of the greatest strikers. Would you all agree? Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Exactly, because he smashed the record. But he's remembered for all the goals he's he's delivered. Do you know what yeah, I mean? He's really not remembered for that one Premier League title. Mm. So I think that Kane could smash the record... Um, at Spurs, I think he could still be. Uh, what's he on now? 160, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So 100 off Kane, so that's 520 goal seasons. Realistically, Kane could be could be delivering that till he's 35, I'd say, and he's 27, nearly 28 now. Mm-hmm. So he could easily smash that record at Spurs. And what I would say is, yes, Kane may not win a Premier League trophy at Spurs, but I think the risk reward factor is still there for Harry Kane because. He could he could still smash Alan Shearer's record, be remembered as one of the greatest Premier League strikers of all time, and still hopefully have that chance. I'm not saying it's a realistic chance, but he still has that chance of winning a Premier League with Spurs. If Spurs were serious and we actually had proper financial backing like Man City, I think Kane would be could be remembered as one of the greatest Premier League strikers of all time with trophies to his name, and I think that's a lot more self-worthy to him than going to a Man City and maybe I would even say that his chances might 
decrease in becoming the greatest Premier League striker of all time because at Man City you've got players like De Bruyne, Gundogan, Sterling. They're all the, they're all stars as well, and they're all going to want. They're not going to give up. They're not always going to give the ball to Kane. Mm. Do you know what I mean? At Spurs, mm. everyone looks for Kane. He's the guy to go to. When you're at Man City, everyone feels like they can take that burden on themselves. So I think if Harry Kane can stay at Spurs, um, he's. I think he's got Shearer's record in the bag. I think he's got Jimmy Greasy's record in the bag. And he'd still have the chance to take Spurs to that luxurative uh, trophies. And it's a long shot, but who knows? Like at the start of the season, four months ago, let's not forget, Tottenham were top of the table. And it loads of pundits. Everyone was getting carried away as we look at it now. But we saw Mourinho's defensive stability. We saw Spurs grinding out results. And people were genuinely seeing Spurs as general title contenders. And who says in a year, maybe two times, if he does genuinely get a, a Van Dijk, a Diaz, someone of that calibre, why can't he take take Kane and Spurs to that to, to that lucrative title? But we're looking we're looking far ahead. But you never mm. know. And I think Kane could could well stay and smash the record. I think that's a really good summary. Yeah. I think that was a really good summary in terms He's of. He's going to break it if he stays in England. Regardless. Oh, 100%. 100%. But oh, I, okay. I like what you were saying about the Shearer comparison in the fact that people don't remember him for winning that title at Blackburn. People remember Alan Shearer's Newcastle, black and white stripes. You know, if mm. someone says Alan Shearer, they don't think Blackburn, they think Newcastle. And like you said, that's where exactly. he did all the goal and um, scored all the goals and broke the records. And I understand. I completely. That that's actually made me think of it in another way, and I, I was always thinking like you know he'd still be a legend if he scored all the goals and didn't win the trophy, but like you're saying if he stays at Tottenham for four or five more years and breaks the record, even when he's 31, 32, Man City might still sign him then and he'll win a trophy, so he might get it well, both. Exactly, exactly that. So, yeah. so I think and Aguero really with Chelsea as well. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> he stayed at Man City, but Chelsea still won him at 32, 33 apparently, and Barcelona. So honestly, I would not be surprised if he gets the record with Spurs, doesn't get the Premier League trophy that we all hope, or me and you do, James. We hope <laughs> he gets the Spurs, but he um, he goes to Barcelona and then wins the Champions League. Like, wouldn't that be the perfect career? Smashes the record at Spurs and then gets his uh, trophies himself. Mm, and potentially in that another country, like you're saying. Yeah, I think that's that's a really good point and really well well put, Jack. Um, Joe, I completely did you really agree with it. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to say like the only thing I would say with Shearer because I'm not letting that go. I'm sorry that this is a big conversation for me. Is maybe he's not just remembered for winning the Premier League, but the fact he does have it is why it's not really questioned. No, and he, you know, agreed, he won totally it agree. and went back to Newcastle, so he's kind of that fairy tale thing. But the thing it's is, it's a burden off his back as well. That's what you can yeah. say. With Shearer, there's the there's the conversation of like, what if you know, like he almost went to Man United. I don't, um, Alex Ferguson wanted him, but he didn't. But he has the Premier League, which kind of helps him with that because it doesn't matter. And the same with like Gerard for mm. Liverpool, he never won it, and all the talk is, you know, that's the one thing he didn't get. And I just don't want that to be the same with Harry Kane. No, agreed. I get that. I totally get that. But I just want to look at it from both sides of the story. Mm. Like you've always got to weigh up both options. It's worth the risk for him, I think, if he wants it, but. He's, he, he, he can choose what he wants. Let's put it that way. 100%. <laughs> Time will tell. Time will tell. And talking to Newcastle, Tottenham have obviously got them on Sunday and uh, that needs perfectly onto the next point. Now, Jack, obviously Newcastle on Sunday. What are your thoughts in terms of the form in the Premier League? Obviously, we've got that win against Villa, if you remember, uh, just before the international break. I'd be surprised if you didn't remember. Um, but obviously, mm. before that was the Dynamo Zagreb game and, you know, the, the whole Tottenham in the media, what was going on, and rightly so. Exactly. What, what would you think our reaction is going to be like against a very, very out of form? I mean, they haven't had much form at all, but a Newcastle team that is very much struggling at the bottom of the league. Well, all I'd say is if we can't beat Steve Bruce's Newcastle, then we are in the serious disarray. <laughs> that would really be horrible. Um, I have to be honest, I would be extremely surprised if we didn't get the three points. Yeah. But you just never know. Like we look, We're talking about Spurs uh, the past month. They were top of the form table. And in one of the worst weeks of their life, in one of the worst weeks in Spurs' history, we were still best team for the month. Like we were talking, mm. maybe top four still on the cards, could be a Europa League, could be a Carabao Cup. And then that one week just sent us into this array. But I'm hoping we could potentially do it. I think I think we should beat Newcastle. Um, that would at least give us a fighting chance at top four because we're still three points off Chelsea and with Leicester last game of the season and them not being 
I'm not fully convinced by Leicester at the minute. They could easily drop points to now to the end of the season. So we need to pick up that we have to win games like Newcastle. We just have to deliver. Do you think, just quickly leading on from what you were saying there, do you think there's going to be a bit more far in the Spurs players' bellies? The fact that we conceded that 97th minute goal, if you remember, against Callum Wilson penalty um, oh, back in word. September. Do you think there will want to be a slight bit of revenge there? Oh my word, there has to be. There has to be because that was that was. Oh my word! I remember because I had a football match and I come home and I've recorded the game, so I've sat through the whole ninety-seven minutes and I'm thinking, you know what? I suppose we played really well, but we need to finish those chances. And then you go and see VAR. Dar's not even looking at the ball and he's heads it down. And honestly, that just ruined my day. And I was thinking, this is a joke. So I'm thinking, if the players are not up for that and we don't absolutely run riot, then there's something wrong. I think Mourinho came. Dyer, if, if he's on the pitch, he's got to be up for that. We've got to show them that that was a one-off and that we are by far the most super, superior team, for sure. 100%. I think, you, I think you're spot on there. Like, that that game was ridiculous. I can't even remember how many shots we had. It was it was something like 20 or... Honestly, we, we absolutely 20, 23, peppered their goal. Yeah, we had 23 shots, 12 on target. They had six shots, one on target, which was obviously the goal. Um, Joe, I think you'll probably remember that goal. Minute. Go on, go on. Yeah, ninety seventh minute actually, but um, even more heartbreaking. Um, Joe, do you remember that game, and and do you think that's going to have an effect on the players? And, and what's your opinion on Sunday? Do you think we're going to get the win? I remember that game. I remember your reaction, which was great as well. Um, <laughs> certainly interesting. Yeah, Newcastle were awful, and obviously they need to desperately start getting points. But I mean, they're in a they're much worse than they were even at the beginning of the season. You know, Callum Wilson's still out. I think Almiron's got a knock and same as um, Alanson Maximan. They literally have nothing. Even Isaac Hayden got injured the other day. Um, <laughs> just so, I mean, I, I went back to it in the other podcast, but watching them play Brighton was just one of the, up there with the worst Premier League performances I've seen in a long time. Um, <laughs> they just, they've got nothing. And yeah, they're at home. Obviously, being at home isn't as much of a big thing at the moment, especially you know compared to what they're used to St James's Park but you have to be in um mm. and I still think top four is definitely achievable you've your run compared to some of the other teams in and around the conversation is not too bad until the end of the season and the fact that although you want to be still in the Europa League the fact you're not in it you know you've got like weak rests between games you can really prepare for it and you know Jack was what I'm saying about Leicester they completely bottled it last year let's put it that way um I know bottle is usually a word that you guys don't like to hear, but they really... really <laughs> uh, I had to sneak that one in there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, not really. But yeah, like <laughs> last year, like Leicester just dropped off. It was it was like that they were top three guaranteed. They're going to be fine. And then they just fell out. Um, and uh, Rogers can't let that happen again this year because then, you know, his integrity is going to be questioned if he can't do it, especially in the position they're in again. Oh, 100%. 100% agree with that and and I think it's going to be a real top five for top four of course like there's there's a few teams that could get in there I think there's six or seven teams that could still finish in the top four realistically so uh, I'm waiting for West Ham to also uh, use that word um, that we can use that word for but um, no, I can't wait till that happens they're so convinced they've got top four or or top five and I just can't wait till last out of the season when we go alright get back in your place mate relegation battle next season <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to bottle though they've overachieved yeah but it'd still no, be they, nice, it'd still no, be nice to use it against someone there, no, let's be honest <laughs> anyway um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go into the Q&A section now and obviously as uh as normal I um asked on the Spurs related Instagram stories give us your best most interesting questions this week and we've had some phenomenal questions I'm not gonna lie um so we're gonna start off I'm gonna start off with Jack on this one because I think it will be an uh, interesting reaction it's going to be an interesting one. So this one's from at Ice Ninth, and he asks, would you rather win a back-to-back Champions League or win the Premier League on Arsenal's ground as invincibles? Oh, oh my word. It's got, to be, it's got to be the latter. Premier League invincibles at Arsenal. Oh, that was... Get a nine back. Yeah. Just, oh, don't. That's just fairy tale stuff, I've got to be honest. Right, I'm talking. But if we did that, that would just that would that they'd have no no gender award us uh, agenda towards us. Would just be by far the superior team. But I think that is very far fetched. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Back to back Champions Leagues, I would have that any day of the week. But to go in, did you say go invincible and then win yeah, obviously, it? Yeah, obviously they Brown. did that. Uh, they always mentioned that they won the league of Wyatt Lane, and we 
we definitely get Ren freed yeah. on that one. So I think it would be cancelling oh, it out, cool. if anything. Um, of course, cancelling it out and then just saying, like, we're the team in form now and we're going to carry on doing it. Obviously, that would be unreal. Sadly, don't think very re- realistic. I'll take wins at the Emirates on their own in a minute. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that, definitely the latter. That would yeah. be amazing. I, I would, <laughs> if you can I do that Harry game for us. Yeah, <laughs> I would have to agree with that one. Although I think they're both highly, highly unrealistic. Um, I think that would have to be the one. I'm not even going to ask Joe that one because I don't even want to know his reaction. I think he knows that they're both very unrealistic. But um, Joe, I, love, yeah, I, love... I mean, optimism's at a peak today, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I'm really glad we got. I Jack don't know on. why. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Joe, I'll ask you a different one. Um, Emilet Goosh asks if Kane goes. Will Son go too? Fact or not fact? You're not going to get rid of them in the same window. Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be like just clearing out your club. Like, I don't know. You can't do both. <laughs> if one stays, if one goes, the other one obviously stays. Um, no. I mean, what do you, you want say, to follow? You say obvious. You say obvious. Do you know Daniel Levy? Could you imagine the uproar if <laughs> you sold both and then just... That'd That's be like, like pixel night, your money. icons of FIFA. <laughs> Be like resetting on football manager and being like, yeah, let's just inject 400 mil and see what happens. But like, not that you'd get out for both of them, but what well, you might do, to be fair, wouldn't be far off. Um, you're not going to get rid of them in the same window. I don't think you get rid of them in the same couple of years span. But um, yeah, you're obviously used to Levy and, and his dealings. But um, obviously Kane and Son are such a pairing. So it's one of those, if one goes, will it disrupt the other one? Uh, which obviously it would because they you know play so well with each other. Um, one thing I'd like to counteract and ask you guys: Would you, would you take Son leaving if it meant you could keep Kane? I'll let Jack answer that one. <laughs> oh, you put me in the deep end. Would I? I'm 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 greedy. I just want them both. I've got to be honest. So, but if I would I take it? Honestly, I probably. You know what, I actually think I wouldn't because I think Son is a very loyal to Spurs. I think he loves the club. I think Spurs actually, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think Spurs resurrected his career. There was rumours that he was going to leave after the first window. He wasn't very happy. And now no one saw Son as that potential world-class player. And now you look at him and he's absolutely flying. And I think that he loves the club. And I really think his loyalties do lie with Spurs. So I would like to think if um, if I'd I'd rather them both be here than honestly I'd rather take probably three hundred million for them both to go completely rebuild uh, uh, rather than just one of them staying there, but that's just me personally. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I I I I don't think I I don't think I'd sell Son to keep Kane. Um, yeah, Son's I your think, Son's your favourite. Let's be honest. I think I think without without trying to be biased, I think. If you sell Son, Kane's ability also goes down because, as we know, they work so closely together and they've broken that record this season with the amount of dual goals. But um, I think Son, although his form's dipped in the last couple of games, we know how important he is for Kane's game as well as Kane's so important for Son's game. So I think, like you said, if we lose if we lose um, one of them, it's going to massively impact us. And that's why maybe I see what Jack's saying. If we do lose one... <laughs> Technically, it's like halving a player. And I know it's not, but because they rely so heavily on each other, I think it would be a massive blow if we sold Son, then Kane would do. Could you imagine not seeing that Son and Kane partnership anymore? Oh, it'd just be heartbreaking. You just want to recycle the whole front line kind of thing if one of them goes. Yeah, just, you know, I think, I it, think yeah. if yeah. you get to that stage, you, Levy said, well, we need to sort of, like, sort of change it and he's cashed in. I don't think, you know, if you sell Kane, you're going to have to get someone to replace Kane now. <sighs> God only knows who you can get Can't in this market for that money. So, I mean, I was just li- having a little look on um, last time we sold a big player, as we know, um, Mr. Gareth Bale, and and we made some really, really good signings, those seven players. So let's just go through them quickly. So obviously we sound, signed Paulinho, um, who was one of the biggest flops I've ever seen for Tottenham. And then he actually ended up going to play for Barcelona somehow. Um, then we signed Ericsson. Very, very good signing for the money. I think it was only 13 million. Then Soldado. Um, then Chadley, <laughs> Capu, Vlad Chirichez, and Lamella is the only one left. So 
obviously we know with Tottenham, if we do sell Harry Kane, we've got to be very careful with who we spend uh, the money on because obviously we, I'd mm. argue that five out of those seven were absolutely horrendous signings. So hopefully... Yeah, we I found it really Kane. weird the other day. Was it the North London derby when um, he had Lameda, he came on and it just made me... Mm. It was weird because obviously you sold Bale and brought him in as pretty much a replacement on that, on that wing. Yeah, we all know that song. <laughs> Yeah, and they were both playing, and I just thought it was so weird. It kind of made me kind of think, like you know, it's just not gone well like, over the last seven years or whatever, is it? Let's be honest. The fact we've replaced um, Bale with Bale uh, says a lot um, yeah. on loan as well. Um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's obviously not ideal. Like seriously, if you think about it, we the we've replaced our prime Bale with not prime Bale on loan. Like, I mean, yeah, if that if that doesn't show how bad that that money was used i don't know what does but obviously Prime made... bail with a deteriorating bail That's yeah i mean obviously i can't argue with levy's business fantastic business at times and obviously you got to look at like the likes of ericsson and delhi ali as being absolutely phenomenal buys but some of the business we've done over the years when you think about like the striker options like i said in previous episodes soldado jansen so that I mean, was unreal from 12 yards though I mean, I think most of his goals were penalties. Yeah, Um, they were. So, yeah, I think that concludes that question. Now, um, (laughs) I've got one more question, um, and this one's from Conor McBride. I'm going to go with Jack. Who needs to go this summer? Oh, that's a hard one to end on. Uh, Okay, who does need to go? All right. Is this are we going to talk about raising money? So, so trying to get some some just, funds. Just who do you think's not good enough for the club right now? I think who's not good enough? I'd go Eric Dyer. I think mm. his time's gone. I think Harry Winks raises money, English player that needs someone like Sabitzer instead. I think Harry Winks has been good, but his time's up, and we'll get good money for him. Um, I think Serge Aurier is good, but we need a new right back because we need someone like Walt, the Walker days flying up the, the flanks. And I'd also say the whole, whole new back line, really. Dav- Davison Sanchez as well. Take the money for him. I think he's good, but he's not going to give us that world-class centre-half we need. He's not the guy. And, and very quickly... Um... You said quite a lot there, obviously. Who's the main two you want to buy in the summer? Main two, I would love to see. So then Botman, I think. I think he's a player I want to see at Spurs. And I'd also like, probably, Skriniar would be unreal. Give me Skriniar right now. But Sabitzer, as well, I think he's a really good player. And I really think him in the midfield with Ndombele and Hoivier could be dangerous. Mm. But that's me looking optimistically. Very interesting points there, Jack, um, for sure. Um, Joe, any any contrasting or reflective points on that? I completely agree with who um, you know you think is a surplus to requirements. Uh, there needs to be definitely a bit of a clear out, and it's not just making funds; it's just kind of making the squad lighter and you know prioritizing the players that you think you know should be in the squad, should be in contention, and by getting rid of some of the deadwood, sometimes it actually makes the players that stay it gives them a bit of a boost. Um, mm. It's like, you know, they, they've survived the cut. It's always good for any player, regardless of what level you're at or whatever your ego is. Mourinho goes as well for in terms of bringing players in. A big centre-half is always key in the spine of his team whenever he does well. Everywhere he's been, you know, when he brings in the defenders, he wants to play his system. That's that's the thing. He's playing his system with... I know they've signed some fullbacks now, but it's still kind of... They're not his centre-backs though, are they? Poch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that and obviously it depends on the Larice situation but you need to make sure you've got a decent keeper if he does move mm. on um Joe Hart is I mean as soon as City let him go to Torino or whatever that was the end of his career I think I don't, don't want to be mm. too harsh on him but um and so bit so I'm assuming obviously Mourinho wants him is a link that's been there for such a long a long time now so I'm assuming that Mourinho is interested and it's not just something the club are putting forward but um he needs to take a another step in his career uh, other than being in Austria you know Leipzig was the club he went to I think back in 2014 well yeah so he, I think he's joined Leipzig since 2014 but he's 27 now he's definitely brought them into relevancy 
Um, but he's hit the ceiling with, with Leipzig now. You know, they're a much better team than they were, but they're not going to break down Bayern Munich in the league, I don't think, and, unless they continue producing insane talent and, and hold on to it. That's the thing. As soon as they get someone that kind of ripens, they, they go somewhere else um, because they haven't got the history of the club. It's a club that was formed like nine years ago and, mm. you know, the Germans mm. aren't happy about it. And as much as, you know, they're competing and they're a big team now, because of the way they've done it, they're never going to have the, the other things that they want. You can't always buy everything, as some teams are finding out. Um, so he needs to move um, to further his career, if depending on what he wants as well. And I think Tottenham could be a good place for him and he could flourish in that midfield if Mourinho does want him. 100%. And I guess we don't know if Mourinho actually wants him. Obviously, like, I know you said that, but um, obviously it's very much just rumours at the moment, but very strong links and... We've been linked with a number of players like Skriniar as well, as you mentioned. Um, and we'll, only time will tell uh, if we're going to get hold of any of them um, for sure. Um, Jack, do you think Skriniar is a good good buy? Has to be. Has to be. That's the guy I wanted massively in the summer. Mm. That's the guy who who I felt... Uh, it was, Janu- was it January or the summer? We yeah, were yeah. No, it was the summer. It was the summer. And uh, I, I was really hoping for him. He would have been the cherry on the cake because we were all screaming about how much of a good window it was, which it really was with bringing Bale home. But we knew, we. I think it papered the crack slightly because we, we always knew the defence was the weakest point and mm. bringing Scrinio into that side would have been huge. And I really think we would be probably, maybe it's a bit far-fetched, but put Scrinio in that, Thursday night team when we lost to Zagreb I think we would have got through that game and I don't think he would have allowed Dorsic to run run through our team like that so mm. it's small margins but I think with Skriniar we would have been higher up the table and probably in the Europa League this season but then again we just got to move from there we can't keep looking back if what could have been like mm. do you know what I mean it didn't happen so let's hope it happens in the summer it's small margins but it's very important margins like you were saying about you know we can't say it, obviously for sure but with a stronger defence, we would have never conceded three goals and, and and at the same time, we should have scored a goal. So I think both um, factors need to be looked at there. And um, it's quickly like what Joe was saying about it's not Mourinho's defence. The only centre-back he's actually signed is Joe Rodon. And obviously we've seen good signs with him, but he's using, like you said, Poch's foundations of Sanchez, Aldevira, or Tanganga when he comes in, mm. Eric Dyer, and Eric Dyer's not working at centre-back. He was very good at the start of the season, but as we know, he's been dropped out of the team. And there's definitely a number yeah. of problems in defence. I think that is the one key thing we need to pick up on the summer. For sure. I think Pochettino is just, it's the same place that let him down really, isn't it? Mm. But nothing's changed. He needs reinvestment. He was always going to require reinvestment, even though he said he was happy with the squad. To take us to that next level, um, we needed players. And Pochettino said that in an interview with Lineker. He said, um, we've got the house now, which is the stadium, and we need to get the, the nice new furniture. And that would be the players. Mm. And let's hope Levy... Um, which I'm sure he will, actually, because I do think he's a great chairman. He just needs to back, back the manager, back the players, and hopefully we'll be sitting here in the summer with a nice uh, summer transfer window. Absolutely. I think you're right about the, the furniture thing. It's almost like it hasn't quite been bought yet. Um, and I think that Mourinho is going to be the one to give them um, that kind of leeway to buy players. Hopefully, Levy gives him that leeway. And... Um, I think that concludes the summer transfer uh, question very nicely. Guys, we're out of time. Jack, thank you very much for joining us as um, a guest today. Uh, it's been great to have your passion. And as you know, you, you know an awful lot about Spurs. So it's been great to get you on. Anytime, mate. Thanks for having me on, lad. No worries. And Joe, obviously, um, same again next week. Same again next week. Hopefully it's uh, with a win against Newcastle on Sunday. Now, before we end, guys, we've had some obviously very sad news in the media today about Claude from Arsenal Fan TV sadly passing away. Now, when I read this news, I was actually quite quite upset because, you know, he, he was a big part of the media in football and revolutionised um, football media and how YouTube works for fan perspectives. And, you know, no one should ever get to a point in, in their lives where, where their life's not good enough to um, carry on. So my condolences go to his friends and family and everyone at Spurs related um, sends our wishes on to them. I'm sure um, you both will agree on that one. Definitely. Yeah, I was really sad to hear that this morning and I wasn't expecting it. And I think it proves that everyone, if they are feeling like that, they need to feel like they have someone to talk to. So, yeah, as you said, James, uh, condolences to his family. 
100%. Yeah, I met Claude um, on a couple of occasions, but most notably for a North London derby back in 2016. And um, he was just so nice, such a genuine guy. And, you know, he's, he, he was one of the more passionate ones that helped, um, you know, grow that channel as well. He was became a bit of a meme online, but it was friendly at the beginning. Um, and just with that whole channel and, and nothing, but just, just how fans have been online and how the state of the online world can be sometimes. It's just another scary reminder that, you know, of how abusive it can be and how it does need to be addressed. And I hope that as much as it's a shame to obviously see anyone go and anyone suffer with it, it's just a reminder that it needs to be addressed, I think. 100%. I think, I think it's another topic for another day, but I think the social media needs to do more against trolls and online bullying. And I think each social media account needs to almost have their own person registered to it because so many people can just hide behind a football avatar or a, a football picture and on football Twitter or wherever it may be and, and abuse a, play, um, a player or even, a, like we said, a, an influencer like that to the extent of obviously he suffered anyway, but just pushing him over the edge, it's so wrong and it's heart-wrenching really. But um, no, condolences again. And um, we will always remember Claude as being a very positive impact uh, in football media and, and revolutionising that with Arsenal Fan TV. You know, football rivalries aside, it's always re- important to remember what's real in life and, and I really respect mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, a, a sad way to end off, but obviously um, happy memories for, um, in terms of Claude's life, we will remember on. Now, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching on the Spurs Related YouTube for the second episode. We'll catch you again next week, same time, Wednesday around 3 p.m. And uh, we'll see you there. See you later, guys.